Hello again to Regina Sailing. Today we're going to talk about radar and some real fog we encountered in one of my sail training legs. I mean it's one thing to do it in classroom, another thing to do some radar training um, in a boat under very nice conditions, but here we had real advection fog all the way from Bayona in Galicia to Porto and it was very interesting to teach and learn and experience the hard way so to speak in real fog the importance of uh, being able to set your modern radar system correctly um, to have a good heading sensor so you could really use the ARPA function and predict how the boats would be moving which didn't have AIS and of course the AIS which was available and then all fishing buoys that we had along the way. Well I have uh, two radar operation uh, places so one operator can sit down here at the navigation table and one is using the plotter upstairs. The workstation down here ha is a totally normal PC running time zero and up there is a plotter by Furuno. Now they both share in the network the same radar antenna and transceiver, the new NXT radar by Furuno. You could also run two sets of PCs, I mean two um, time zeros with the same radar, uh, but the important thing is that somebody can sit down here and concentrate on this and somebody out there comparing with what he sees in the fog. Because four eyes sees more than two eyes and in fog it's really important to concentrate and to take your shifts and don't sit uh, in front of the radar screen for more than half an hour or maximum an hour because it is quite tiring. We also noticed how important it is to have two different ranges set. So one for long distance viewing and one for short distance viewing. One for vessels and one for fishing buoys. So join me in the story how we came to Porto. We started our trip down to Porto in Galicia, here Isla Cies. Wonderful weather, but we could see some warnings. Because as soon as the wind turns a little bit south of west, advection fog forms. The warm, moist air from the Atlantic is being pushed northbound and visibility decreases. Radar navigation becomes essential. And here are some real-time screenshots from my time zero when we encountered fog between Bayona and Porto. Hello. It's moist out here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have a good radar, man. <laughs> Uh, and then the visibility pump comes in and goes out and a few minutes ago it's probably 400 meters and then it's now it's down to what 50 meters particularly on the port side but to the stern you can see a lot further which is really strange so let me take you through some settings and radar operation from the real time and freeze the picture sometimes the first question is the range and many people think it's cool to have a long range so you can look far but that's not the true picture, because while you can see far ahead, you, that is not the interesting part. The interesting part is where collision can occur, namely very close, half a mile away maybe when it comes to buoys, and maybe three miles when it comes to vessels. Depending on the range, the gain must be set accordingly. And if you take up the gain, you see far too much. As you can see here, you can see red targets, which are the strong ones, the yellow ones, which are the intermediate ones, and the green targets, which are weak. And historic data are blue. But this is far too high. It is not easy to see a picture. So that's why, depending on the range, you have to set the gain accordingly. On most radars, the automatic setting is good enough, so we don't have to play around. But for an illustrative purpose we can take down the gain and to see how everything disappears and everything just becomes historic fading away blue data. Then we can take it up again and we see too much. But let's keep it at automatic. On a day like we had with hardly any waves it really pays off to switch off the automatic sea clutter to take it down so that even the weakest targets can become visible. And that was very important because we did have weak targets, namely all the fishing buoys. The next setting is orientation. 
Look at this time lapse where everything is relative with head up display. Head up means everything is moving and we are in the center. The alternative setting is north up. It's now us moving over the radar screen and buoys are standing still and vessels are moving in true motion. With the orientation set to head up, the gain automatic and the sea clutter low, let's look what we can see. The colors we have been speaking about, and we can see some red targets here, but very interesting are the blue ones, the trails, which gives historic data to see where the echo has been. If this has been set to relative motion, everything would have been um, having trails, even things that are standing still, because it's relative to us. But here it's set to true motion, so this one has no trail, it stands still. This echo, this target, does have a trail, so it does move, namely in opposite direction to us. We have a weak target here, maybe a buoy or something, and some target, very interestingly, turning sharply to port. And here's some historic fading away data, there has been something visible before. Doing interpretation of targets, that's a big difficult thing. Look at this moving target. It's the joy of finding things. It's like the x-ray doctor, looking for things, looking around at different ranges. So what is this, moving so quickly? And here another one. There are a lot of targets moving around on the picture. So it can be quite frightening, actually. Looking out helps. So look out and you will see that there are birds flying. So if you take down the wave plateau and you have very little waves, that disturb the pictures, you can see them very well. Look, they're flying all over the way. But which ones of these are birds? You do need some experience and it takes time to learn to distinguish the different targets. If they're standing still, if they're moving, if they have false echoes, ghost echoes or whatever. Look at these two targets, very clearly on the same place all the time. No blue trails, so they're not moving because the trails are set to true motion. These are two buoys, fishing buoys, not far away and very typical along the Portuguese coast which you have to take care of. Many modern radars have great features such as target analyzer using the Doppler effect or ResBoost. But you should try them out because some of these features weaken the targets. So in this case, if I switch on the target analyzer using the Doppler effect, the two buoys on my port side actually disappear. So Better to switch it off in this case and to see them as clearly as possible. Do look out sometimes and compare and you can see how good the visibility is. And you will be surprised sometimes how close they are. Because if the radar screen is only looking quarter of a mile away, it might look much further away than it is. Here's another popular setting. You go to dual nav to see chart and radar. Have the radar on head up and the chart on north up. So you can zoom out the chart to see where you're going. But beware, you only see AIS targets and there are very many boats which don't have AIS. So maybe it is good to go and switch to dual radar when you're offshore like I am here. So one is set to two miles to the right to see ships and one to quarter of a mile to see buoys. And you can see here, there is a target with some ghost echoes, actually side lobes. Here is a target with no AIS, very strong, so that must be a ship. We acquire the target, it gets a small round circle, because now the ARPA is doing its job to find out what it is. Let's do an acquire on this side, to the left as well, very close. We acquire target to see what that is calculating. And you can see now to the right that it has become a vessel and it is moving. And the prediction is just like the AIS. So the only difference, of course, the AIS also gives additional information like the ship's name and um, uh, length and what type of vessel it is. And here is the true strength of dual radar navigation. Let's acquire that one as well. These two circles, meaning the buoys are standing still, pop up on the right side as well, but very, very close to ourselves in the center. So you would not see them, these buoys, if it only used two nautical miles. And if we only used quarter of a mile, the vessels would po pop up much too late and we wouldn't have time to change our course according to rule 19, which is the rule, the Colregs rules that apply with radar navigation. 
Shortly thereafter, another vessel popped up, this time with AIS in front of us. It has a name and if you click on it you get a lot of information, like when we will meet it and how close we will get. You can get all the information about the fact that it's a sailing vessel, that it's 12 meters long, its position and so on. So that's very useful to navigate with. But if you have a good ARPA and a heading sensor like a satellite compass, you get similar accurate information from an ARPA. Of course, not the name, it has only a target ID, but it gives a prediction and a track quality in percentage, so you know how good this uh, information is, so you can trust it almost as good as with the AIS. Here you can also see that the waves have increased, so it's time to increase the wave clutter filter a bit. And looking ahead, we have some more mysterious targets. Look at all these. What can that be? Now, this time it's very good to go back to the dual nav with plotter and radar. So let's go to that. Here we are. And now we can see the, we can zoom out a bit. So here we see the targets. So they, we can zoom in on the chart a little bit. And then, when the mouse is moving over the targets, a corresponding cross is moving over the chart. So we can exactly see it says WF wind farm. So that's a wind farm to be avoided. You might wonder why I don't use radar overlay. I'm not a big fan of radar overlay. The reason being the plotter has so much information and chart details that the small weak echo just disappears. For sure it can feel exhausting to sail through the fog, but with a little bit experience and taking turn at the radar, you can experience that you see just as well with the radar as with your eyes. But I think I speak for everyone that we were quite relieved when we sailed into the Duoro River to Porto and moored in the Duoro Marina, being all thankful that this was yet another safe passage.